Okay, we'll be back together soon. What? 
on number. All right, breakfast time. Hot mush? Oh, no. You don't get hot mush this morning. Yay! You get cold mush. And after your mush, there's an order of dresses that you need to finish. If you have to wait straight through till midnight. Morning, 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 man. Morning, bunnies. Morning, kids. Green cheese. What's the mom looking in the room? Morning, my Oh, uh, hi, Aggie. Uh, listen, I gotta keep going, you know, play over and everything. Uh, see you January. Ah, uh, come here, you uh. big handsome brute. Don't you wanna know what I'm getting you for Christmas? What? And for young. In Chinatown. For two. Uh. And for young for Christmas. Really? Well, yeah, what are you getting me? Well, uh, what did you tell last year? Nothing. Good. And then again. <laughs> Get out of here with that laundry. Uh, right. Uh, see you, Aggie, and uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, kids. Merry Christmas, Angels! Oh, 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 you call this clean, Annie? This place is like a pigsty. <laughs> Annie.
many women long to prove that because a woman is 35 or more, romance in life need not be over. That romance can live at 35 and after. Oh, bless you. God, I hope so. Good afternoon, Miss Hannigan, is it? Yeah. Lieutenant Ward, 17 Precinct. You found your runaway. You, get in here. Oh, thank you so much, officer. Right now, 
She don't have no coat. All right then, we'll buy her one. I'm getting a coat, she's getting a coat. We'll go to Bergdorf's and get you a warm winter coat. Oh boy, I can hardly believe it. She can hardly believe it. Come along, dear. Mr. Warbucks and Clementine is waiting outside. Okay, kids, I'm getting out of here for Christmas. All right, see ya.
Tech. It's good to be home. How was your flight from Chicago? Not bad. Took 17 hours. And we only had to land eight times. <laughs> now, first things first. Has the painting arrived from Paris? Yes, sir. They're just about to hang it now, sir. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Grace? Yes, sir. Messages? Yes, sir. President Roosevelt, he wants you to call him at the White House. I'll get back to him tomorrow. Anyone else? John D. Rockefeller, Mahatma Gandhi, and Harpo Marx. Nothing urgent. What did Harpo want? He didn't say. <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe I could learn to live with this thing. Hang it someplace. Yes, sir. Mr. Warbucks, I'd like to oh, speak to you. Oh, and Mrs. Pugh. Yes, New England clam chowder, Kentucky fried chicken, Wonderful. and a bit. I won't be having dinner this evening. I've got hours of paperwork to get through. Wonderful. And, uh, Grace, I'll need you for dictation. Yes, sir. All right, good to see you all again. Drake, dismiss the staff. Grace, if you'll get your notebook in. <laughs> Who is that? This is Annie, Mr. Warbucks. The orphan who will be with us for the Christmas holidays. The orphan? But, uh, that's not a boy. Orphans are boys. I'm sorry, sir. We just said orphan. So I chose a girl. Oh. Well, uh, I suppose she'll have to do. Annie, huh? Annie what? Sir? What's your last name, John? Well, I'm just Annie, sir. Mr. Warbucks. That I know of. I haven't got any last name. So, uh, you're just Annie, huh? I'm just Annie. And I'm sorry that I'm not a boy. I, uh, I don't suppose you would like to meet Babe Ruth. Oh, boy, sure I would! Who's Babe Ruth? <laughs> I couldn't be happy that you'll be spending Christmas with us. Grace, we'll start with the figures on the iron ore shipments from Toledo to what are we supposed to do with this child? It is her first night here, sir. It is. Well, Annie, your first night here, I guess we ought to do something special for you. Why don't you sit down? A movie? Would you like to go to a movie? Oh, boy, sure I would. I've heard a lot about it, but I've never been to Never? No, sir. Well, then we've got to do something about that right away. And nothing but the best for you, Annie. <coughs> You'll go to the Roxy. Then an ice cream soda at Rumpelmeyer's and a handsome cab ride around Central Park. Golly. Grace, forget about the dictation for tonight. We'll do it first thing in the morning. Instead, you take Annie to the movies. Yes, sir. Ah, gee. Something the matter, Annie? Oh, no, it's just... No, no. What is it, child? You want to go to the Roxy? Oh, no, I really do. It's just... Huh. I thought maybe you were going to take me. Me? Oh, no, no. I I'm afraid I'll be far too busy tonight to, uh... uh gee. Annie? I've just been away for six weeks, making an inspection tour of my factories. I was left to my factories with this dang depression, and when a man is running... Oh, the sure, that's okay, Mr. Morgan. Excuse me, sir. Bernard Ruth is calling. Good. Hello, Barney? Yeah, I got it an hour ago. No, Detroit and Chicago. Listen, Barney, I didn't like what I saw up there. Factory shut down. My factory shut down. You're... You're Don Tootin. When I'm not making money, nobody is. And gosh darn it, Barney, your car Roosevelt's got to do something drastic. He's got to come up with a new approach, a new plan, a new something. Yeah, I know he's a Democrat, but he's a human being, too. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you about it. Come over here tonight. Good. We'll be able to... I can show you the... Barney, make it tomorrow. Tonight, tonight I've got a date to go to the movies with a 10-year-old girl. 11. I was mistaken. She's 11. <laughs> <laughs> Drake? Yes, sir. Coates? Yes, sir. Grace, you'll be coming too, of course. Yes, sir. 
Will you be wanting the Bellis uh, or the Duesenberg? The Duesenberg. Excellent. No, choice. wait. This child's been cooped up in an orphanage. No Duesenberg. We'll walk. Walk Excellent. to the Roxy? Sure. Why not? It's only 45 blocks. Yes, sir. <laughs> Smell of it. Fifth Avenue bus stops. There's nowhere like the end of York. You don't realize how much you miss it. The whole day city is even away from you. Like the man says, after New York, every place else is bridge point. F-Y-C. What is it about you? You're big. Oh, shit. 
contrary, Mr. Warbucks is delighted with Annie, and Annie's having the time of her life. Oh, how nice! Yes, she and Mr. Warbucks are practically inseparable. They go everywhere together, to the rock feed, to the stock exchange, and oh, guess who they had lunch yesterday? Mm, the ward off! The automat. The automat! And she just loves her new coat. She never takes it off. Never? Never. Miss Hannigan, I know you're busy, but this has to be signed and sent back to Mr. Donatelli at four orphans by no later than 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. What for? Because Mr. Warbucks is so taken with Annie that guess what? What? He wants to adopt her. Oh, how nice! Oh, how wonderful! Now let me get this wonderful news straight. Annie, the daughter of a millionaire? Oh, no, no. The daughter of a billionaire. <laughs> billionaire! And Mr. Warbucks has had much drop by in person to tell you that Annie won't be coming back here. Ever. Ever. Ever, ever, ever! <laughs> well, you'll excuse me for just uh, one moment.
I was born into a very poor family in what they call Hell's Kitchen, right here in New York. Both of my parents died before I was ten, and I made a promise to myself. Someday, one way or the other, I was going to be rich, very rich. Well, that was a good idea. <laughs> By the time I was twenty-three, I made my first million. Then in ten years, I turned that into a hundred million. In those days, that was a lot of money. Anyway. Making money is all I've ever cared about. I might as well tell you, Annie, I was ruthless to those I had to climb over to get to the top. Because I've always believed one thing. You don't have to be nice to the people you meet on the way up if you're not coming back down on me. <laughs> but what I've lately realized, no matter how many Rembrandts or Dusenbergs you got, if you have no one to share your life with, if you're alone, then you might as well be broken and back in Hell's Kitchen. You understand what I'm trying to say? Well, sure. Good. Kind of. Kind of? I guess not. Dang. <laughs> I was in Tiffany's yesterday, and I got this thing for you. 
Thanks, Mr. Warbucks. You're so nice to me. I, uh, had it engraved. It's a silver locket, Annie. I noticed that old broken one you always wear, and I thought to myself, can I give that kid a nice new locket? Thanks, Mr. Warbucks. Thank you very much. Here, we'll just take this old one off. No! Don't make me take it off. I, I don't want a new one. Annie, what is it? This locket. My, my mom and dad left it with me when they left me at the orphanage. And there was a note to you. They're coming back for me, and I know being here with you for Christmas, I've been real lucky, but I just don't know how to say it. The one thing that I want in the whole world, more than anything else, is to have a mother and father and folks of my own, and to just be like all the other kids. And it'll be okay. I'll find it. I'll find your parents for you. It's going to be all right. I'll... I'll get her a brandy. All right, Annie. <laughs> yes, honey, if there is any man on this earth who can find your parents, I'll go to Warbucks is that man. Mr. Warbucks will find your mother and father if you have to pull every political string there is to pull. Yes. Up to and including the White House. The League of Nations.
folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, all of them of us. I have something to tell the wonderful families of I'm all about this beautiful little girl right here. Yes, good evening, Bernie Annie is an 11 year old family who was left by parents on the steps of New York's municipal orphanage on the night of December 31st, 1922. And is it true that you are conducting a coast to coast nationwide search for Annie's parents? <laughs> yes, Bernie. I am now conducting a coast to coast nationwide search for Annie's parents. Drop page. Furthermore, I'm offering a certified check for $50,000 to any persons who can prove that they're Annie's parents. Wow! Wow! So Annie's parents. If you're listening in, write to all of the Warbucks care of this station, WBAF, New York, New York, or directly to him at... At my home, would you? Into the mic, please. At my home! <laughs> at my home, Bertie Lee, 987 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. That's 987 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York. Please read that. And I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the makers of all new Oxidant Toothpaste with Miracle L64 to fight bad breath for letting me appear here this evening. And I just did a dang commercial. I've never endorsed a product in my life. This is the most unbelievable day. Thank you, all oh. of you are, but everybody give us a hand. Oh, wonderful guest here. Amazing, amazing. So, Annie's parents, if you're listening in, there's $50,000 and a wonderful little girl waiting here just for you. So get in touch right away, you hear? I'm Mr. Healy. Isn't it time for those wonderful boys and sisters? Wacky, it is. So, it looks like by the old clock on the wall that another one of our Thursday night get togethers has gone by faster than you can say, Oxy Night!
Mr. President, this is my good friend, eh? She so wanted to meet you that I couldn't resist bringing her along, just to say hello. Of course, the little girl who sang so beautifully on the radio last night. Annie, this is President Roosevelt. How do you do, President Roosevelt? How do you do, Annie? You're as lovely as you sounded on the radio. Thank you, President Roosevelt. Well, uh, shall we begin? Annie, if you'll excuse us, no, just No, no, Albert. Let Annie stay. A child will keep us on our best behavior. Thank you, Mr. President. Annie? Franklin? A child. Now, Oliver, since you speak for those happy few Americans who have any money left, I'd like to begin with your views on the matter. Mr. President, in the words of Calvin Coolidge, the business, the business of, of this country is business. And for the good of you, the country, Wall Street, and me, we've got to get my factories open and the workers back to work. According to my latest figures, there are now 15 million Americans at work and nearly 50 million with no visible means of support. Sir, if I may say so, the worst thing about this country is the fact that we're about to go to war with Germany. Have you seen the dispatches? Germany, heck with that. People are starving in this country. I know that, but in the long run, we're 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 not gonna be. We're starving, there is no long run. The worst part of it is that it's happening all at once. Not to mention that the stock market is taking another nose dog. Sit down, strikes and riots. Floods, dust storms. And the FBI still hasn't caught out the pump. Yeah, well, at least we're all agreed on one thing. This situation is hopeless and getting worse. Yeah. Henry, I'd like to see those videos. Yeah. Just thinking about tomorrow. Here's the way the call was in the song. Fight, little girl. Harold. What did you say, Amy? That's all right, dear. Go ahead. It's still free country. <laughs> Just thinking about tomorrow. Here's the way the call was. Annie? Bye, everybody. Bye, Annie! 
Goodbye, Mr. President, and thank you. No, thank you, Emmy. You're the kind of person the president should always have around. Mr. President, what we need to give this country is a new outlook. Dance. Yes. Highways. Yes. Post offices. Yes. We can create five million new jobs within six months. Yes. Manufacturer of Annie's Locket in Utica, New York. Oh boy! That sort of locket was manufactured between 1918 and 1924. Sort of locket? Yes. Over 90,000 were made and sold. 90,000? Annie, I'm afraid the gist of it is that Ness doesn't think there's a chance in a million tracing hands in the locket. I'm sorry. That's okay. You did the best you could. If you couldn't find him, nobody can. I guess a person can get along with okay without books. I mean, you didn't turn out so bad. You get all the Duesenbergs hanging on the wall and everything. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. We'll go check on the dinner menu. Annie, a Duesenberg is a cause. Babe Ruth is the right fielder for the New York Yankees. And there's something else you should know. I've made a fortune. That fortune may turn Been headlined and profiled Again and again But something was missing I never quite knew That something was someone But who? My speeches are greeted Wondrous acclaim at two universities bearing my name. Yes, something was missing each time I got there. Something was someone, but 
My grace, that's a very pretty dress. Thank you, sir. How does you put any in one of the new dresses? <laughs> How about I do something with her hair? I don't know, take her upstairs and gussy her up. Yes, sir. Gussy her up. 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 Gussy her up.
left hand in the orphanage, we left half of a silver locket and kept the other half so that one day... Oh, Ralph, well, look, she's back again! And here's the part we kept. Oh, yes, it was perfectly. $50,000 to anybody that can prove the day any's parents? No, sir. We don't know nothing about your check. Anyway, we don't want your money. Great, we don't want any money. On the other hand, so we like a little pig farm up in New Jersey. Well, with $50,000, we could buy it and afford to bring up Annie correctly in the country with fresh air and fresh eggs. Fresh hair. <laughs> Fresh hair. Certified, huh? All I gotta do is make that for myself? Yes, that's correct. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Yes. You wouldn't mind if Annie stayed here until tomorrow morning, Christmas. Then you can come back to pick up Annie in the truck. Oh. Oh. Problem? Oh, no, sir. Whatever you prefer. So I think we should have to be heading back to the hotel now. Bye, Annie. Until tomorrow, honey. That you'll be spending the rest of your life with us. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, all. Season's great. <laughs> and Merry Christmas, one and all. <laughs> well, this is uh, wonderful news, everyone. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> Annie has found her parents, and they seem to be a very nice couple. Yes, yes. very nice. You're lucky, Annie. I'm lucky, all right. Just think. <laughs> Mrs. Greer, champagne? Yes, sir. We must celebrate because it's Christmas Eve and you've just had the most wonderful news in the world. Yes. yes. Annie has found her mother and father. Everyone, I propose a toast to Annie Mudge. <laughs> to Annie Mudge. Annie! Annie! Merry Christmas, everyone! You <laughs> seem to have that same effect on everyone. I've lost him. I've lost him. Sir, that is too much. I think I've seen him someplace before. I just can't remember when or where, but, but I have the strangest feeling that he's not who he says he is. Mr. President? Frank. Frank. Franklin, I need your help. Of course, Oliver, anything for you. Dear. We've 
you've had quite a time of it. FBI man coming and going. Annie, did you know that President Roosevelt is here? Really? I've got something very difficult to tell you, and the president is going to help me tell it to you. <laughs> How do you do, Annie? It's good to see you again. Oh, it's good to see you too, sir. <clears throat> Franklin? Annie, early this morning, FBI Director Hoover telephoned me with some very sad news. Through the paper and the handwriting on your note, he succeeded in tracing the identity of your parents. Well, yes, we already know that, Mr. and Mrs. Mudge. No, no, dear. They aren't your parents. Your parents were David and Margaret Bennett. David and Margaret Bennett, but, but where are they? Annie, uh, Annie, your mother and father passed away a long time ago. You mean they're dead? Yes, dear. Well, yes, I am an orphan after all, like all the other kids. Are you all right, Annie? Yes, I guess I always knew that my parents were dead. Because I knew that they loved me and they... They would have come for me if they just weren't... I love you, Annie Bennett. And I love you too! Now, who the heck are Ralph and Shirley Mudge? Atta girl, who the heck are Ralph and Shirley Mudge? <laughs> the person they could have easily been forged, but the thing is, they knew about the locket. The locket? That's your key. But nobody knew about the locket except us. And the FBI, of course. Miss Hannigan. And Miss Hannigan. And Miss Hannigan. And Miss Hannigan. <laughs> Ms. Hannigan is so angry. You know my secretary, Miss Farrell, of course. Yep. <laughs> and this is the President of the United States. Sure. <laughs> and this is my butler, Drake. Hey, kids! Yay! Oh, guys, look over here. There's a Christmas presents for all of us. Oh, my God! This just came in from the FBI. Comes the dawn. Now it all fits together. Annie, come look at this. <laughs> Leaping lizards! Who would have guessed? Show it to the president.
go out classrooms and teachers. Yay!
costumes. Uh, Becca Weaver with the elementary cast. Catherine Schultz for helping us with communications. Madeline Banazar for promoting this show. I'd like to thank Melanie Little for being the cast mom. Uh, Dale Kincaid on the microphones in the back. Anthony Zanone on curtains. I'd like to thank Sunshine Doodles and the Puppet Family for letting us do the music. Uh, I want to thank the Clark County Library staff for giving us the opportunity and working with us to do this show, so thank you guys. Uh, I want to thank for letting us put this show on for you guys, so thank you for that. I want to thank parents and teachers. Uh, we really could not have done this without you. Finally, I want to say thank you to the Lord. He has really given us this opportunity. Give us the talent to be our And if we could have a huge round of applause for our major director, Mr. Thank you guys so much. I need to get my kids home so that they can rest. They have a couple more performances for tomorrow. So I'm gonna ask if you guys wanna take pictures, take pictures. Uh, as soon as they're done, uh, cast and crew, if you guys could, you guys know the go home, all right? We need to be out of here by 11, all right? So I just wanna say thank you. Love you guys, and bye.